I, I root for injuries all the time. Yeah. When Zeke Elliott got hurt for two guy? games, I, I think I threw a ripper that weekend. In, in celebration of it? Yeah, I hate that guy. Sick. Hate him. If they're playing my guy, they can fucking die that week. I don't care. You know who, who else I hate? The public. Hate him, too. Hate the public. That's why we fade their asses. We fade your asses. Welcome back to the Fade the Public podcast, y'all. It's uh, Nicholas, Animal, and Snacks. We are members of the E-Town Get Down, which is a high-stakes fantasy football league. This will be our 11th year in <laughs> existence. Wow. But uh, once a week, we hop onto a podcast the fade the public podcast and we discuss everything fantasy football everything relating to our league once the actual season kicks off we will uh, obviously record all of our league meetings we'll vlog the entire draft day talk about waiver wire moves trash talk all that kind of shit throughout the summer though we help you prep for your drafts prep for your leagues give you any commissioner advice you need also if you guys have any commissioner questions i would love to get more into that stuff throughout the summer so yeah, drop those gonna, comments be down below you. Yeah, um, so so drop some commissioner stuff. We'll also talk about anything that's relevant just in the fucking world, basically in our millennial sick world that we have here in the contaminated dungeon. <laughs> Today we got a uh, fantastic show lined up for you. We're gonna talk about some bold predictions. I know everyone loves bold predictions, and there you know there are a few keywords on YouTube that play really really well. <laughs> bold predictions happens to be one of them. Bold predictions. So we bold predictions. Fantasy football. Bold, bold predictions. predictions. Twenty nineteen fantasy football bold predictions. Bold predictions. That's what we're going to do today. But we're going to have a little bit of a twist on it because we don't want to make bold predictions for 2019 fantasy football this early in the summer because a lot of things change. So we're going to make these bold predictions based on what's going to happen leading up to the actual season. So things that we think will happen throughout the summer, then we'll revisit those bold predictions right before the season kicks off and then make some more bold predictions for the actual NFL season. So we're going to talk about some training camp battles and some things that we think will come to fruition throughout the summer. In this episode, we're going to talk about some uh, Vegas over-unders. So Vegas obviously has the win totals up for all the NFL teams in 2019. You know, eight and a half wins, seven and a half wins for all 32 teams. We're going to break down two or three of them each that we really like and that we would put the mortgage on, um, whether we think they're going to finish with less wins or more wins than Vegas uh, has them pegged at right now. And then we're also going to do a section that I think we want to kind of include each week. And we're going to take some of our favorite comments from our from our uh, podcast the week prior and just talk about them, whether we're yelling at you for writing some bullshit down below or whether we're commending you or you made us laugh or you made us cry, or anything that emotionally moved us. Yelling at us. Yeah, exactly. So we have uh, a few screenshots of the best, our favorite comments from um, last week and they might be fantasy football related maybe answering some of your questions so make sure you do drop some some comments and questions down below and maybe you will be featured on next week's episode oh, man i hope you guys had a uh, fantastic memorial day weekend i'm feeling really fucking good right now I, honestly you know what for the amount i drank and, and how many hot dogs i ate the last like two days i somehow feel really good too this was a beautiful weekend it's kind of yeah. odd I'm, even though i'm sunburnt to the gills yeah yeah I don't know if you guys could tell, but I'm a little I am, toasty. You are looking a little I scaly. Red I always knew you were as fish. my head. I like that. Mm. You fucking wrote that down. Yeah, you planned that. 100. percent Today was a beautiful, uh, beautiful weekend on the East Coast, though, man. I really yeah, uh, it was enjoy this one. Beautiful 75, 80 degree weather. Where the hell were you? It was fucking 90. Tons of mar. I was. What do you mean? I was fucking roasting. I have the evidence. Dude, I just. I. I. I, I didn't to- even make it to the barbecue. I was pitting out in the fucking Uber. Wait, what? you didn't make it to the barbecue? I mean, I made it there, but I'm, my shirt, I was pitting out. I was oh, yeah, I destroyed. Saw that. Yeah. yeah. Terrible. Those are big man problems. Yeah. BP, B, BMP, BMPs. Big man problems. Yeah, you BMPs? got the BMPs. BMPs. A lot, a lot of people out there <laughs> yeah. can relate. Yeah, it's just a beautiful weekend to kick summer off, man. Love Memorial Day weekend. Got to hit the beach a little bit. Got to uh, drink a bunch of margaritas, but we're ready to go. It's Monday, so you'll be watching this on Thursday. I hope you all had a great Memorial Day weekend. Y'all ready to get into some bold predictions? Yes, sir. animal you take us away with your first one bold predictions for the summer my first one there's this guy his name is chris warren he is an undrafted running back for the uh oakland raiders he played last year in the preseason and he got hurt so here's my bold prediction he is going to break out this preseason and this training camp and overtake the starting role and be the number one running back and not josh jacobs it will be chris warren Chris Carson 2.0 coming in as a late round slash undrafted free agent taking over a first round picks starting role. Literally the same. Alleged I mean, I wrong, said yeah. this is this is bold predictions, right? I'm, ask, I'm asking you That's, to conf- confirm the facts. Yeah, listen, here's the deal with, with uh, Chris Warren. Last year he had a great preseason. And in that preseason, I got the numbers here for you. He's a former University of Texas standout. I, I got the numbers here for you. Hold on. Let me, uh, <laughs> I had to scroll let me find the numbers. I had to scroll up. And tell us where he went to school. I was reading too. below. I was reading below. <laughs> 
He um, listen, his numbers sucked in college. Three years, 1,150 yards and 13 touchdowns. Not eye popping at all. But the Raiders saw potential in him because he is six foot four, 250 pounds. He's six two. He's six two. Sit on it. I got six four right here. So you're looking. At so fake, he's probably six three. Go ahead, keep fake going. News, go. Whatever. Okay, so he's a big ass six foot guy who's 250 pounds. And listen, he had 58 carries and 292 yards and two touchdowns in that preseason. And there was the famous clip, I don't know if you guys remember this, of him absolutely destroying Gerard Davis, the linebacker for the Detroit Lions. I remember Chris Warren. I get a lot of comments Correct. about Chris Warren. Yeah. My, uh, my my issue with that is that, like, he, like you said, didn't do anything in college. I think this is a— He was a, also a tight end I think this point. will be a very popular bold take. But, like, I go back to the fact that you're looking at a sample size in preseason. Oh, yeah. 99% of the time, that doesn't work out. He's also coming off a serious injury. I know he's had time to heal, um, but they obviously love Josh Jacobs there. I don't see it happening. I, I just, I, I fade anything that really happens in preseason that doesn't, I, I, it, it was a few good runs that made him look good, yep. but I don't know. The, the, the college production is not there. Uh, he doesn't catch passes. If your bold prediction is just that he overtakes Josh Jacobs as a starting back, okay. I'm with that. That's it. I'm not projecting him to rush for a thousand yards and have ten touchdowns. Fair enough. Yeah, he's going to be the guy in, in Oakland. Yeah, I get a lot. Of, I I get a lot of questions about him, especially for like dynasty, because people are high on him after last preseason. But like, so I, he could be the next Derrick Henry. And that's so, so, that's saying a lot. So what? <laughs> that's saying a lot. He's got BMPs, man. Big man problems yeah. as well. I think he feels you on that. Six two two forty seven. He's a he's, he's a big, actually apparently he's up to two sixty according he's a to Gruden. Big, like why, like, why would Gruden tout that as a good <laughs> he thing? He was pumped about it. He's like, he's up to 260. He's looking good and big. There's no <laughs> one that John it. Gruden... There's nothing that John Gruden doesn't get pumped about. I know, it's great. There's nothing that he... Like, there's no one on the team that he doesn't think is going to be, like, the surprise of the fucking league this I year. tell you what, man. This guy. The he's Darren got the Waller? body frame, and he could be a good ball player, okay? Yeah, fucking, fucking John Gruden, man. He's All right, so Chris Warren, I like that. Snacks, what you got for us on the bold front? Uh, so I got a little something different. Um... There's been a lot of turmoil, I guess you could say, within the uh, the little brother New York Jets over the last few weeks. Skirt. Uh, they fired a general manager, and, and then um, Adam Gase, with all of his historic success as a losing head coach with Miami, has taken over the reins as the interim general manager and right away traded Darren Lee for a six-round pick. It was reported that he was not happy with how much money the Jets gave Le'Veon Bell. I can't believe that came out. I can't believe either, because... Le'Veon Bell is not exactly um, the most strong-willed person. Doesn't take criticism too. Doesn't great. take yeah. criticism too well, and of course he's saying all the right things. So is Gase, but we saw Gase's eyes in his opening press conference. That guy's a <laughs> psychopath. He like legitimately a psychopath, and I think he's going to. I think in his mind he's going to try and undo Mike McCagnin's mistakes in his eyes. So I think Le'Veon Bell gets traded before week two of the preseason. Now. He's making a ton of money as That's a running a bold back. Very it's bold. bold. Bold prediction. Very bold. Bold prediction. Um, probably a 0% chance of happening, but it's bold, and I, I'm i going to stick my fucking dick out on it. I think that's what's going to happen. Um, All right. He's making way too much money. Gase, Gase the, the, the running back in Gase's system, he, that's why he was angry with the contract. They're not. Well, you I mean, saw it in is, Miami. There's. You know, this isn't something that's new to Gase, though. You saw not, him get rid of Landry. He's got right, rid of it's a revolving players door. before. Yeah. That back thing is a revolving door. He shipped him out for nothing. I think he knows he could be successful without paying a running back $12 million a year. The question is. Because he's a stubborn asshole. Two questions there, I guess. Le'Veon Bell, like, he doesn't He doesn't want to use the money on Bell. But the fact is, right. he's already there. All, already the, free, all the free agents are signed. And so, at this he, point, it's dead money. And he is. So why give him away well, if you're not going to be able to sign I read, else I read, spot? No, no, I agree. But I read somewhere that his contract is like the dead money this year if they trade him in the offseason isn't like astronomical. So I guess that's one reason. Well, no, it wasn't It wasn't necessarily that they're, they're going to lose money. It was the fact that like, you know, you don't want to give this guy money so that you can give player X that money. Yeah. You know, Because it's, too late, right it's too late in the game. And the draft yeah. is already done. So his, his trade value goes no, down because all these guys already took running backs yep. and stuff. So Couldn't agree more. However... I am going based off of reports and Gase's history and the way he just, I don't think he... I like the take. Yeah, You can also I, just go off of the injury history. Someone's going to get hurt and they might need a starting running back and maybe Le'Veon will be available That's why I gave it week trade. two of preseason because somebody's getting where do you hurt think, week four. Where do you think are possible landing spots for him? Well, I would have said like Buffalo, but they're not going to trade yeah, they have within so much the division. Depth. They got depth. They're not, you know, because I, I figure McCoy gets hurt and Frank Gore is about the age of my deceased grandfather. It's like... 
you know, Houston, that's not really Kansas City. Houston, I lo- I, Kansas City. Houston was like the big room. Imagine the Rams. I wanted him to go to Houston in the offseason. Yeah. Imagine the Rams came out and traded for Bell. Well, that would that's be, be fucking madness. madness. So, so I'll, I'll start wait till my next ball prediction. Or Miami. So. Miami took Bell after giving away Adam Gase. See, and Miami has no use for him. No. I, I see, like, Marlon Mack's a really good running back, but I think Le'Veon Bell's a lot better, and I think he would be great in Indianapolis. I would hate that so They much. have the cap. They do have the cap. They have the cap. They have the, the draft capital. They I just don't think they want to do it to the team. I think they have something good going right there. Uh, see, in, in and, that, and we talked about we it. talked about yeah. this earlier in the offseason before free agency hit. Like, they have... They have good character on that team. They don't want. Oh yeah, when we were listening to the fucking PMT on the way to Nashville, that uh, when they were interviewing Chris Ballard, when they were yeah, Chris Ballard. He's like, anytime I think of adding a player to the roster, I you know, it, it's more like draft capital. It's like if, if right. there's a tiebreaker, I always break the tie by looking at a player's character, not right. like his talent. And, and I mean, I, that I just think, speaks to the greater build of yeah. the team. I don't think Lev Bell fits their no, character I build because no, I think that all. is such a goddamn good fit. I yeah. can't picture Andrew Luck and Le'Veon Bell like being buddy buddy and like fucking. No, no. no. I think Bell would cause problems. Yeah, hundred percent. And I think he's gonna causing problems here too Leaving, he's like I said he doesn't have the strongest uh, yeah. he doesn't take criticism well he's very sensitive yeah and you see it come out quickly when teams don't do well and that's probably going to be the case in, yeah. in New York although I mean they could overwhelm we'll see, we'll see. But, yeah. but, I, I like the bold take though it's, it's, it's a bold prediction we it very well may not happen but we'll see I like just it just the, the reports are out there it's already surfacing so yeah Um. alright so I have like a bunch of ones here rip that I, that I, I'm gonna rip, rip off like them off. three that I that aren't like too hot of takes and aren't that interesting, but I'll, I'll get them out of the way. So I think Theo Riddick has a possibility of getting cut. I know he signed that like lifetime contract with Detroit, and it seems like he's been there forever. But if they cut him, I think they lose less than a million dollars, maybe eight hundred thousand in cap space, which is obviously nothing to nothing. these NFL teams. And I think thus my bold take would be that Carry On moves up into the second round as a fantasy player um, if Theo Riddick gets cut because Theo's out. I mean that gives all the passing work to a guy like Carry On Johnson. And I mean they re-sign Zach Center, they draft this guy Ty Johnson who. A lot of people are probably unaware of, but a fantastic athlete. Uh, they bring in TJ Anderson, so it's like none of these guys obviously have the passing down role that Theo Riddick has, but I, I just don't see a use for a pa- just a strict passing down back in Matt Patricia's offense because Karen Johnson can do all three things. They also brought in Danny Amendola to be the slot guy, so it's like, I don't know, and uh, what's his face? Hawkinson to, to run those routes over the middle. A lot of mouths to feed So there. it's like, yeah, like Theo Riddick is like a luxury, but you don't necessarily need him when you have these other five running backs that you – either re-signed or signed through free agency. Yeah, I've looked just, at like, Theo Riddick as like the Detroit Lions handcuff for their running backs. Like he's just their guy, like no matter what, someone goes, I right, throw Theo, Theo in there. Yeah, like he's just a weapon at this point. Yeah. There's a, there's like a strong chance that like once Theo Riddick retires, he's going to run for mayor of Detroit. <laughs> Probably, <laughs> I mean, the way the Everyone Lions, knows, the he's way like a household Lions name. have like bowed down to him, it's He is the worst NFL player that is a household name Literally. around the league. Yeah, it's sickening. Yeah, so I, I just, I don't know. It, it seems like this point, it's like we have Theo, so we're just going to force him into the lineup to use him and like let him, let him catch the ball six times for 41 yards that any running back could do that, you know? Mm-hmm. So it's like... I don't necessarily know why they would cut him, but it, they just have a lot of running backs on the roster. And thus, I think that would shoot what's uh, carry on Johnson's ADP. Because that's like an underlying concern for most people. It's like, oh, he's not really going to get the passing down work. Right. And if Theo's out of their mind, then it makes them a lot, you know, feel a lot better. He'll definitely shoot Carrion. up if, he, if he's yeah, out, if Theo's out of town. they see those targets open up in their head. Yeah, and, and like, carry on was getting targets even when Theo was in the lineup last year, too. too. So, so it's like he, he, he'll shoot up for that reason alone. But yes, Theo's so I out. think we're going to see some surprising things happen in this Detroit Lions backfield throughout the summer. Uh, I like Emmanuel Hall, this undrafted free agent from um, or Missouri? that went yeah from Missouri. Great measurables, good in college. He played with Drew Locke. Um, so I, I honestly think that Emmanuel Hall kind of made Drew Locke, not the other way around. Animal. We'll see. We'll see. I, listen, I don't we'll have any. See. I have no takes on Drew. Locke. Um. So my, my my hot take is that Emmanuel Hall actually overtakes what? Taylor Gabriel's spot in in that lineup as the uh, the other outside wide receiver opposing Allen Robinson. He's bigger. He's pretty much just as fast. I think he's a better playmaker all around. So uh, Taylor Gabriel had like two big games last year. I I don't see the staying power there. I don't know why they gave him the big contract. So I like Hall to take him over. Because of your team, he had a good. He had one good year with the Falcons, and then yeah, and he was just like a he was just like such a secondary player behind yeah. Julio. He was and a all boomer bust guy. He kept hundred percent go yeah. for sixty yards. Yeah. So the contract they gave him was just uh, crazy asinine. Um, and I think my other my, one other thing I just want to say is Torrey Smith, Chris Hogan. I think even though they just um, Chris Hogan just got signed, I I think both of them are going to get cut and washed out of that wide receiver depth chart from the Panthers this summer so if anyone else wants to throw in some bold predictions let's get it so my next one was Frank Gore retires before week one no that's so bold 
just for the fact that like he's probably going to play till he's 40. because yeah, exactly he might actually play another 10 years <laughs> he's just as likely to play for five more years as he is to retire this summer yep That's and listen he, you know he part. signed this he signed a one-year deal with uh, buffalo for two million does he need the money? Probably not. Does he love playing football? I'm assuming that's the only reason why. He's just trying to climb up the, the running backs. Uh, the okay, so Frank time. Gore is a Hall of Famer. Yes. Yeah, hands down. He, 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 he's, what is your, he's a what, stat compiler. Right. What's the argument here for like, he never hits, he, he never hit the peak of, you know, what a lot of Hall of Famers is like prime was. Like best running, he was never the best running back in football. No, yeah. but he's consistently but like he's, a top 10 guy. He's great. And he's obviously been horrible yeah, the last like seven, eight years, four years, nine years, thousand yards. Like that's, <clears> yeah, so it's like, unbelievable. yeah, I mean, the longevity. He played for 10 years in, with just the 49ers. That's yeah. craziness. And, he's, and, he's, and running back he's playing for 10 five, years on one team. He's top five rushing yards of all time, right? Yeah, I think he's four. He's got to be up there. He's, he's just a, a compiler. A yeah, I can't argue that he's going to be a Hall of Famer. He should be in there. I don't know if anyone had any hot, look, hot takes you, on you it. Look at the eye test. He's not a Hall of Famer. No. Not at all. In his prime, he's such a good running back. He but was, like, he was he's not good. someone that you're like, oh my God, he changed the game. Right. You know what I mean? He's not yet. He's, uh, let's see. If there was a Hall of really good, he'd be there. At this <laughs> season, at the age of, really of 36, good. he'll be looking to make even more history as he needs just 522 yards to climb into third place on all-time That's why rushing lists playing. ahead of Barry but like, Sanders. But, like, is he even he gonna, retiring? Is he going to get 500 <laughs> yards this year? Probably never, not. I, well, he had 722 last year, I think, right? Yeah, yeah, because the fucking the Dolphins, Dolphins gave him 160 carries, but he's not like <laughs> yeah, he's not leading that backfield carries. in carries. There's a this strong year. chance he's just going to die. Year, he's he's going to need two yeah. or three more years to get 520 rushing. No, yards, last year like. he passed Curtis Martin, and this year he's trying to pass Barry Sanders. That's it. That's well, the only he reason why he's Barry playing. Barry Sanders, jeez. That's why he's playing. I mean, that's it. So, so that is play. a hot take. Frank Gore retires, but I, I mean, I can totally see it happening with them bringing in the young guns, and they signed him. I mean, he was like the first fucking free agent running back that was signed, which was crazy. The they already had like a bunch of old guys on the. It was like, yeah, that's chart. It's like we know position. who we want. We want yeah. Gore. So gore. Why though? Gore. <laughs> gore. Yeah. Gore. And they didn't. They didn't have the draft, <laughs> yeah. so they didn't know like who they were going to take. And if it, it wouldn't be surprised if they if they got him. So I like that bold prediction. My, one of my bold predictions here is that David Johnson becomes a top five fantasy consensus pick again by the time drafts come around in September. He will not be a uh, top five pick for me, Bold. but I think the fantasy community is starting to rally around him now. And I think his ADP on draft.com is like number seven overall again. Here's Man. the thing. People love running backs, right? And Adorable. they're going to push him up the draft board, right? I think we're all in agreement that those top four guys are in their own tier. Yep. Yep. Probably Melvin Gordon, maybe uh, up at number five, but you have Zeke, C-Mac, um, Saquon and Kamara as those top four guys. After that, you know, you can go D Hop, you can go Melvin Gordon, you can go with a bunch of guys. I see yeah. David Johnson moving up further and further up draft boards, and I think the buzz from that training camp is going to be incredible. Like something we may, oh, yeah, you're not going to hear anything seen. negative, right? Right. Nothing so negative. You heard a report yesterday. It's like, oh, they're going to run exclusively out of the shotgun. People like people on Twitter who have never literally looked at any numbers will just be like, "Oh, that's so good for David Johnson." It's like, why? Like, show me something that says why that's good for David Johnson. So yeah. I do that in Madden, bro. Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> it's, so it's like David Johnson will get the hype. Then, like, if he does one good thing in pre, if he has a game where he catches like four balls in preseason, like that's it. People are gonna go nuts, and I think he again becomes a top five pick in fantasy this and year. He's, I mean, he's only a few years removed from being the number one fantasy player in in, in the game. Exactly. Yeah, you and know, then with you the know, guy has talent. <laughs> terrible, terrible team after that. Awful, you know, awful, awful coaching, line, awful, awful coaching. Yep. Quarterback play. Everything. Did you guys own David Johnson anywhere last year? In redraft leagues? No. no. Not one place. W are you willing to draft him this year? Yes. In the first round. So you do. Yeah. Oh yeah. I'm uh, not. Drafting. I, but I'm not going to move him up as like what we were just saying. I would take him after like the D hops and the the okay. Devonte. He'd be my first running back in that next tier. In the probably. next, yeah. like, I, so like nine or ten. So I have like a, yeah. obviously seven, you guys eight, know I, I have uh, a Maybe. strong bias against David Johnson for, for like, personal reasons. for last year, yeah. I play this. Cool. They broke Well, I think it's been a little broken. DJ on the board. Number two picks in the books. He with Bell. Johnson, Apparently, he doesn't read the fucking news. He's not in 2018. Oh, Bell's holding out. Dude, I think it's a little risky right now. We don't know if he's reporting. It's Monday night. We haven't seen anything yet. One with David Johnson at two. Thus, Bell's off the board. Johnson's on my team. Let's go, DJ. He did you dirty. I'm wondering if I'm like being too subjective about this and not more objective about this, but I just still think I'm looking at David Johnson. I'm like, he is a, like three years away from being the number one fantasy running back, but yeah. that is, you know, it's, we, three years. it's two years since we've seen him be a good NFL yeah. running back. Yeah. There's going to be a lot of hype, but I just, I, I don't know if I could buy into who he is as a player because we haven't seen it in a while. But I do think he's going to he's gonna be one of the quickest risers in that first round over the next couple of months. 
So, DJ, someone else take it away. Uh, I got... Finish this off, Snack. Skirt! Yeah, well, here's where I'm going to go with. Um, I have two quick ones. Go there. Uh, Do it, man. You're not going to like what I'm saying. Yeah, just because, go for it. you know, you got some dynasty value in him. Yeah, and yeah. I, you know, you've been trying to trade him for pennies on the dollar because, <laughs> you know, you realize you made a mistake. But yeah. Todd Gurley is not going to see the field at all this preseason in okay. games or training camp. And he's going to plummet. And the reports are going to come out, which I think one, they, did one just weekend. came out like yesterday. Yeah. Yes. yeah, that like they're really worried about his knee. It's like they're, we've they're, fucking they're, been saying that for no two shit. months now. So yeah. like, I, so I, I subject by saying this, this may not even be a bold prediction because if you pay attention and you read and you listen and you you watch, you know. Todd Gurley, there's something wrong. Something I'm proud to say that we wrong. were on the forefront of, of that push of Todd Gurley. <laughs> oh yeah, since they we won. were on it since they won. Yeah, so that's it's a small. I was sitting right here. And I just fucking that is a small ball said. prediction, but so. I, he is going to plummet, <laughs> plummet. He's his ADP still what late first, early second, mid second. Oh, the the uh, majority and, of the majority of fantasy football players are still going to look at him as a top eight pick 100%. easily, and they're going to get burned. Is he on your do not draft? Burned. He's on my yeah, do see, not draft. I am not this touching a, um, the ten foot pole. Is this a fade the public situation here? What do you mean? Where like what's the the public side on this? That Gurley's just gonna be his knees he's fucked. Be he's gonna be. He's he's gonna, gonna no, suck. they're they're gonna see it. They're gonna love it because he's not gonna play. Around. He's not gonna play in the pre. Oh, he, he got his rest. He's good. He's good. He's gonna be fine. No. I've seen both no. sides of it where it's like, listen, people are overreacting. He's got you know a little arthritis in his it, knee. It depends. If you mean by the public, like deal. the general public, they're still gonna like Gurley. Yeah, they're gonna love. But we're so into like the fantasy Twitter. That the public seems like it's we oh fade girly. It's my public. So you know what like, I mean? Yeah, okay. but it's only like oh, really collectively like five hundred people. Yeah. You know what I mean? But when you're looking at the majority of fantasy football players, are gonna be like, well, it's just a you know what the problem is? People yeah. look at every injury as like one or two things. They're just like, oh, if someone says he's gonna be good by OTAs or training camp, he's fine. Like they, no one yeah. looks at context of the injury. Right. Yeah. And that's like, something what was I've the been, injury is it gonna linger for years? Right. Is it gonna be degenerative? Because there gonna... one there's like PCL where it's like a short timetable to recover, but it also lingers for like two years or something. Yeah. I forget yeah. what Doctor Moore said, but like that's something I've been trying to work on to be better as a fantasy player is like really take each injury into its own contextual like situation. And I think Gurley's is one that with like, arthritis, that's a completely different. Yeah, like this is insane. I've never seen this. before. For it. Yeah, at, at 20. Which is why I think all these reports are bullshit and he's going to be fine. Okay, I think you're an idiot. There is Listen, a reason. I why. said it before. I have arthritis in both my shoulders, osteoarthritis. I get out of the shower, I blow dry my hair. It hurts after a little while. You, you, it hurts it you to blow dry your hair, but it does, you don't get hit by fucking 290 pound D lineman Listen. on the reg 24 times a week. Animal, you animal. I, res on, I respect you telling us how old you are that you have arthritis in your shoulders, <laughs> but Dude, I found that you out couldn't be more wrong in this situation right here. <laughs> Todd Gurley's a bold prediction. Wrong animal guy. gets two sh shoulder replacement <laughs> surgeries by next but it, summer. No, but it's so true about like people not taking into context what these injuries are. Mm -hmm. If somebody gets shot in the head, but the report is he'll be fine by OTAs, they're going to draft him first round. Like mm -hmm. you have to think his brain. Might be scrambled. His he brain might, might be scrambled. <laughs> one hit and he's dead. But oh, he's good for OTA. Yeah. So I'm going to. But they said, yeah. But they said training camp. He's full yeah, go. He's, he's going to be good. Wrong. He's going to be good for week week one preseason. My draft is week two preseason. Oh, I'm all good. No, no. please. We're we're trying to help you here. I am strongly advising get away from Gurley. He's going to plummet. At least that's what I say. It's my ball prediction. He doesn't see the field. He fucking plummets. So yeah. you say he plummets. plummets. Do you take him after he plummets? If you can get him in that fifth, if he's round? in the fifth round, I'll take him. Yeah, to. fifth round is probably where I'm looking at him. That's and I, I, I literally wrote this on our show sheet. Todd Gurley barely sees the field in preseason and plummets to fifth round or yeah, late. And if yeah, you're looking at it from like a up. value, like fourth round is probably the value. But the fact of the matter is that we're so down on him that it's like you don't want to. It's like you want to take him out of value there, but you don't want to also pass up on someone else you can get in the right, fourth but, round. And that's the thing. Like yeah. if he's sitting there in the fifth round, I'm picking mid to late fifth round, and I know I can get a starter that I'm going to be confident that will be consistent for me. As opposed to taking a chance, or like on Gurley. yeah, or like fill your tight end spot and be good, like an Evan Ingram, yeah. or OJ Howard, or and something. You, there. Somebody who's going to be there, who's going to play. Not every week, I'm gonna have to worry. What is Todd Gurley gonna do? How many touches? Yeah. It's is like Todd you Gurley like the upside, have? but I also think the earlier in the ra the earlier you are in your drafts, it's like the less uh, risk uh, averse you need to be. Right, you know? exactly. And so. like fifth round for Todd Gurley, that's unbelievable value. That's you know, injury report or not, depending on what comes out later in the summer. Yeah. So I'm with you, man. I'm still not touching him. Uh, this kid, Dylan Mitchell, out of Oregon, was a seventh round pick for the Minnesota Vikings. Clearly, right now, they don't have a, a, a secondary outside wide receiver, right? They have Diggs on the outside, they got Thielen inside, and then they have nothing on the, on the other side. Yeah. Right? They have like, they're trying to squeeze Treadwell, in like Lacroix and Treadwell. Bust. Didn't he get cut? Yeah, he got cut. Or I think no, they, they're not picking up his option. Yeah, Words. didn't pick okay. up his option. But he's, right. he's, so he's, a former he's first he's round bad. pick not getting his option picked up is really yeah. bad. So if you look at Dylan Mitchell, like six one, two hundred pounds, four four six forty. His measurables are very good. Um, his college dominator. 
uh, 35.6% of all the production that was coming out of Oregon. We've seen a lot of dominant Oregon uh, wide receivers, but you know he's got a very, very clear path to working his way up and, and really taking a significant role in that offense. So I like this kid a lot. I best comparable to Michael Gallup, and I don't necessarily love Michael Gallup, but he's an athletic he's playmaker player, on yeah. the outside. Yeah, so I, I like um, him to be kind of a sneaky pickup. So I like him t overtaking that wide receiver two role on the outside of Minnesota. Uh, that's one of my bold predictions. And then... I have to do something with Nikhil Harry here because I just love this kid. I think what he does in preseason is he catches two touchdown passes from Tom Brady throughout the preseason. I'm not sure if it's going to come in week two and week three. He's going to catch two touchdowns from Brady in the preseason, and his ADP is going to jump up ahead of guys like Robert Woods and Sammy Watkins. I think that that's what I— That's a good— That's, good that's like what that. will happen. I'm a big fan of Nikhil, so I can—I mean, I can— how can if, you if, not he, see it? if he has a good preseason, he's like, gonna skyrocket. It, it, yeah, all you're going to do gonna... is give guys like me like you're, the yeah. perfect storyline to be like, yeah. this is why you need this. Yeah. People yeah. already know, like they have it in their head that he's going to be that guy, and then once they can see once it, they see it, then it's like, all, oh, that's it. It's all systems go. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So I like Nikhil Harry to do something. Um, they're already practicing together, him and Brady. I saw that the picture. On yeah, and that's Instagram. those are the things Dude, that are going to shoot his ADP with Edelman. They were like in Brady's backyard or something. That was ridiculous. Nikhil Harry looked like a beast. He's already in. He did look like a beast. So that was really my only thing. And then I had something about Royce Freeman. I think again works his way into like the fourth round ADP. Yeah, I actually, um, I, it's not really, it's nothing too, I, I think Rashad Penny is going to have a great preseason and like a lot of good reports are going to come out of Seahawks camp. Yeah. And I think he's going to skyrocket. And Carson just got some work done yep. on his knee. Yes, he did. Yeah. And I was, going, to see I was going to bring that up. And I'm a big Chris Carson fan. I've yeah. had him like I think last we all are, yeah. I love him. Um, but Rashad Penny's first round pick and he's very talented. So I think everything you're going to hear about him and see on television in the preseason games and the reports at a training camp are going to elevate his ADP from probably seventh round. You know, it, it really depends well, on... Who would you rather have? Say uh, Chris Carson and Philip Lindsay both died tomorrow. They ended up in the cemetery. You could choose one of them straight Royce up for Freeman. season long. Royce Freeman, sorry. Royce Freeman and Rashad oh. Penny are the starters for the team. Their backup is just some so under the free agent that are, isn't going to get touches. Who would you rather have on your team? I'm going to take Rashad Penny. Who would I rather have? Royce Freeman. Did you not just fucking hear everything I said? No, you confused me because you said Philip Lindsay first. I thought well, you were I said saying. Well, he said if they died. died. If Philip Lindsay so Royce and Freeman Chris and Rashad died. Penny both end up Starting as the respective starters yes. on their teams. And they yeah. have no competition. Yes. Who are you taking? Uh, of the two. Who do you want straight up in the season-long league this year? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Literally, fuck your face. I don't <laughs> know, man. It's an on-the-spot question. It's tough. It's really I mean, tough. It's tough. I would take Rashad Penny. I would take Rashad Penny. Penny. Maybe just because they run the ball back. so much. They run the ball so much, but they also involve their backs Dude, in the passing game. They do. And, and Denver I, doesn't do that. Well, I never – like, they literally just ran the ball down yeah, everybody's neck the, last year. My pop, even, I struggled because I don't know what the Denver's offense is going to be like And yet. you lost yeah. – you were, and you were trying not to be Seattle. biased and exactly. saying Royce Freeman That's right why away. I figured yeah. you would go Penny and I figured you would go Freeman. Yeah. So I kind of liked where it was going. But, like, I think the fact that you hesitated lets me know that Penny is the right pick. Penny's the guy. Yeah. I think we're a consensus My fandom just wanted to be Marcos. Yeah. Yeah. So when you pause, I'm like, Okay, no, he doesn't. Yeah, Penny's a better prospect, yeah. I think. He's, he's a, just a better, I think he's better running back. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, I, I, any more bold predictions we have here? Um, uh, I think Eli looks real good in the oh preseason. My God, <laughs> exactly. I was gonna. I, I don't know why I asked it because I was waiting for like the Giants twelve wins or some bullshit. I can't. No, no, no. no okay, no. let's move on to uh, some Vegas over unders. Uh, I, I'll I'll rip off the first one right now. Do it up. Now we're, we'll link the. Uh, page that we use to show was it FanDuel and DraftKings' his lines right now? Yes. Okay, so um, we were using the the lines from the page that we'll link in the description below for what Vegas has pegged as these teams' win totals. Indianapolis has an over-under total of 9.5. I'm going to smash the over on that. They had 10 wins last year. What about last year told Vegas that they're due for regression? Worse, yeah. So and They didn't lose any, like, and here's the thing, too. It got better. Oh, I, we got all the big facts here. Let's like, hear him. Lux, hear him. Lux's shoulder was clearly less than 100% going into the season last year. In week three, you remember Jacoby Brissett came on the field to take the Hail Mary at the end of the game? Yeah, because Luck couldn't throw it. That down. literally told you that Luck was not at 100%, yeah. right? If he was at 100%, that they was would scary. not have done that. So it wasn't until really the second half of the season that Luck was like full force, you know, Andrew Luck. Uh, and no, not a lot of people remember that they started off one and five last year. Yeah, the oh Colts yeah. were one and five last year. Terrible. Went nine and one over the second half of the year, over the last ten games, not including playoffs. Um, in games where Marlon Mack played forty percent or more of the snaps, they were nine and zero oh last year. 
They add Devin Funches. They add Paris Campbell. Hopefully we have Jack Doyle staying healthy. All five starting linemen are returning. The defense was way better than most people expected it to be last year. Darius Leonard stud. Darius Leonard stud. They add Justin Houston on the edge. They had four picks in the top 90 this year in the draft. Three of them were defensive. They have Rocky Sin coming in uh, at cornerback. The other two were linebackers. And just look at the rest of the draft. Besides Paris Campbell, their other seven picks in the first six rounds were were defense. So it was just Paris Campbell and then all defense. Clearly, they're looking to build. They have nothing else to build on that offense. Yeah, the offense is set. And And the defense isn't even awful. The the defense is not awful. And now they added more pieces to it. Young, good, like all that means is continuity. And you look at their division too. Like Houston is the only team that kind of scares me in that division. And dude, they had the easiest schedule last year though. Who? Like Houston. Their Houston? schedule, like strength of wise, was like yeah. one they, of the they, easiest in the league. Team, and they, they, still... they got players. Houston's a good they team. Jacksonville and Tennessee are are average teams. Yeah, I, I'm yeah. waiting to see on Jacksonville. Tennessee, I think. Both of them will really get overhyped. There will be people who are going to be like, no, like that's a tough division. But anyone, if you brought up any division, people will be like, that's a tough division. Yeah, Doesn't yeah. matter. But Jacksonville and Tennessee, realistically, there are going to be bad teams in the NFL, and I wouldn't be surprised yeah. if these two are are them. They're going to get overhyped. Neither of them have good offenses or just all offenses overall. Indy was five and two against that division last year, including playoffs. And Indy's a team that you're going to need to score points in order to keep up with yep. them this year. So I don't see Jacksonville or Tennessee being able to put up the the points to to let them do that. I think that's four wins right there straight off the bat. And I think they're just going to demolish a lot of the other opponents. So Indy over nine and a half, considering they had 10 fucking wins last year and they're going to be better this year, is, is a fucking mortal You're lock. literally asking them to just be 10 and six again after they started one and five last year. Yeah, like... I, 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 I don't know what Vegas. What, Why what is you, the, what the, are you the doing? juice should be like minus three hundred on that? That's like the stupidest. I agree. Yeah, it should have been ten. And, it should have been ten and a half. It should have been. That 10 makes and a half. more sense. It does, and no, I would be a little eight. nervous. I don't ever like to predict a team to, no, for eleven. Wins, I would but, never bet. Well, the over. eleven was the Patriots. That was the highest I, for um, this year. Yeah, I'm surprised. I, I feel like they're not like as good as a, of a regular season. No, team. they're not. They were eleven and five last year. Yeah. So that's why. Yeah. Right on the money, right there. Yeah, I mean, all right. So someone else take over. Uh, All right. You got it? Yeah, I'm ready. I've been waiting Uh, for this Jets one for... Respect your elderlies. So here we go. Listen, I'm going with the Jets. The line is seven, and we are taking over. We're going over, right? So here's the deal. Are you going over? We're going over. So here's the deal (laughs) with the Jets. Besides the new additions, you know, Le'Veon Bell, the the couple O-line pieces, now it's Darnold's second year. The Jets have a very, very interesting pattern with first-year head coaches. That pattern is they win. Mm-hmm. Let's go Ooh. back to 2015. That's a good point. Todd Bowles' first year, 10 and 6. That's over 7. 2009 with Rex Ryan, 9 and 7. That's over That's 7 awesome. also. 2006, Eric Mangini's first year, Jets went 10 and 6. <laughs> is that over 7? That's over 7. <laughs> 2001, Herman Edwards, first year, 10 and 6. 2000, Al Gro. I don't even know who that is, 9 and 7. Max, go. I think we get it. I don't. And we can it. go all the way back to 1997 for Bill Parcells, nine and seven. Who's that? First year of the of, of, of the Jets as the head coach, nine Skirt. and seven. Adam Gase, first year as the Dolphins head coach. Anyone want to guess? Ten and six. Oh, and Ten and six. All over seven wins. So I mean, it's an interesting. It's an interesting trend. It is. It's very. That's, interesting I feel trend. like the Jets will, like when they get a new head coach, they're excited. The organization is pumped. They play very well, that and does then they happen. just That's jet weird. down. Just All those coaches, none of the same players were on the team. I get. I get it. I like the trend. I actually think that's good. I, I knew about that trend too. Just like from. Rex Ryan and Todd Bowles. Wait, what was the over under? Seven and a half. Seven. 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 Which what they what they do last year? Too. What was they there? Four and last 12? year. Four and twelve. They yeah, four and twelve. So a four game improvement. I could see that if Sam Darnold takes a step forward. Yeah, he has to. I mean, with that, if he's going to be the guy there, he's I just have, have very to. little faith in Adam Gase leading that team. So 10 6, his first year as a head coach. It's funny you say that because on the, on the I I can't be that faithful in them improving four games. Um, I like that trend. I do. Skirt. Uh, but I'm not I'm not a believer yet. I don't trust Adam Gase for it and I could throw him. I think this whole McCagnan thing really throws a wrench into it. a lot of their best players were either drafted or signed by Mike McCagnan. He gets up and fired and he literally ran the offseason. He signed the free agents and he he ran the draft. Some, something's weird about there. Adam Gase is like the fucking Lord Varys. Adam, Ga- of, Adam of Gase, is a, he's a fucking weirdo. He's a sneaky, sneaky He's a fuck. sneaky son of a bitch. When he, when that press conference, when he was... I see, yeah. He's Did, crazy. Were there any, like... There was a taco floating around. He would not be... <laughs> listen, if the if Jets didn't hire him taco, as, what would you be the doing? Guy along, if man. the Jets didn't hire him as head coach, he would not be a head coach anywhere else. That's a fact, not opinion. I don't know, Peyton endorsed him. 
Oh, wow. He did real well in Miami. He, dude, he didn't do that bad in Miami. Everyone, okay. everyone rags on him in Miami. Okay, is that why, like, literally Dolphins players this past, I guess, when the season ended, they go, we want to be traded if Adam Gase is still the head coach? They didn't like the way he was coaching because he was apparently Because he's, he's a, real, a scumbag. Nobody likes him. Apparently he's very strict. Nobody likes him. Well, strict is fine. I don't mind that. But nobody likes him. He's going to, he should be, he better be good for Sam Donald. They, they have a difficult schedule. The Bills are always playing tough. The Dolphins always play, well, the Dolphins are going to be terrible. The Patriots, you have to play twice. They're playing the NFC East, the Eagles, the Cowboys. Uh, I'm not going to name any other teams in the NFC East because, you know, they might not be juggernauts. They got to play the Browns, who you think are going to be much better. The Jaguars could be better. So, I am not all bought in on this, this how this chemistry works right away. Uh, Sam Darnold, you know, he showed promise. Does he make that next step? Four or five win improvement. I just don't see it. I think they go six and ten. Year two of Sam Darnold. All right, Sorry, so we got conflicting uh, conflicting opinions. Sorry, about Max. New York. Like, that's like, fine. Suck my dick. That's it's fine. <laughs> it's gonna happen. No, that's fine. You can just completely disregard history. It's whatever. Don't don't worry. About uh, it. Trends are meant to be broken. History is meant not to be repeated. It's over two decades, buddy. Still going strong. But whatever, we'll see. Yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna put him at seven, seven Grizz, wins Grizzly and, and take a, the push. Grizzly Adams had a beer. <laughs> <laughs> the push is probably the most accurate. I, I just don't have enough energy to talk about the Jets right now. Neither do I. I'm so pissed, little brother. I have I have Arizona over five wins, five point zero wins. Uh, I know they have a lot of work to do on this team, but I think this offense is single handedly going to win them six games. Uh, their defense was really bad last year and performed way worse than you know you would have expected them to perform, but. No defense is going to be able to play well when they get what their offense gave them last year. You know, they're going to be tired. Horrible field position almost every fucking time they're on the field. You know what I mean? Uh, They're going to run and gun. They're going to score a ton of points. Uh, And I'm not putting them in the playoffs, but I think six wins is absolutely attainable for an offense that's probably going to put up 25 to 30 points a game. Um, Them losing Patrick Peterson for the, what's he out, six games? Yeah. Six oh, games. Yeah, yeah he dropped his appeal. It was eight, and he dropped it, so it's six. That definitely hurts the defense, and I actually made this pick prior to that defense, uh, prior to that report coming out, but I, I don't know. I, I still just... It's, well, he might have been traded anyway. I mean, there was the rumors that he was going to be gone. Yeah, we, I think, we I, don't know. I, I just think the improvement on the offense will it, exponentially help I, I don't defense. even. Yeah, I don't even think you're going full on defense. Like, yeah. the way nobody has seen... Well, I mean, whatever the case is, this air raid offense coming in with Kyle Murray, it's going to... It's going to bring some suspense and some Tom fuckery to these teams. Like they're like, what's going on? Yeah. And in that sense alone, I could I could see them getting a five and just pushing one more to get six. So. Yeah. So I feel comfortable at five. Like I feel comfortable at least getting a push out of that. Yeah. But I do think they'll hit yeah. six. Push is better than a loss. All right. I'll take that. So my second one is your team, the Atlanta Falcons, and the number is set at eight and a half. I think and I think that's going to be a popular uh, win total bet. I think this is the easiest one, honestly. Taking the over because I like that. Listen, last year, what the Falcons finish seven and nine. Yeah, because they, they were not. They, they finished on a three game skid to yeah. fucking move their draft. We could have asked Oliver, yeah, you yeah. motherfuckers. But, but what that shows me is that it's, they're not a bad team. No. They had a terrible situation with injuries. They were injury riddled on their defense. They had Devonta Freeman was out. If you go back here, look. In in 2016, they were 11 and five went to the Super Bowl. They were 10 and 6 in 2017 and lost in the divisional round. Last year they had an injury riddled season. They finished 7 and 9. This year coming up, the Falcons are playing 13 of their 16 games indoors. Crazy. Yeah. Matt Ryan has won 61% of indoor games over his entire career. Good stat. Dirk Cutter, stat. Dirk Cutter's bike. Dude, I don't I don't think that's a positive. No. I, when he coached I have him the in numbers here when he when 6 he was, and 10 last time he was there. Well, no, but his, Matt Ryan's numbers. Matt oh, Ryan. Matt Ryan, here's the thing. His stats Matt are going to be great. Stud. His stats yeah, are going to be way, great. No my, 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 my concern is that, like, besides passing statistics, the rest of the team might fucking not do well with their cutter there. Mm. Like, okay. I, him, and, him, Julio, and Calvin Ridley are going to get their numbers. They're going to eat. No doubt about that. But, like, I also think uh, their offensive numbers were inflated. People, I've also, I, here's the other thing. Like, I like their offense. I do. I think it's actually, you know, probably a hot take here. But I think it's uh, overrated. Because their numbers only looked that good last year because their defense was that bad. Yeah, there was like a six game stretch where they were well, yeah, literally they were letting up forty points behind. a game. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Was like and it was like it was time. just hail mary, hail yeah. mary. And like they're not going to get. That's not going to be the case. But I mean, I'm sorry to interrupt, but go on. No, you're good. Listen, you're a Falcons fan. You can bring yeah. all the all the info. It's perfect. Well, no, listen. That's really it. Was thirteen of the sixteen games? He's got to win nine games. Yeah, they he's do have a lot, a lot riding with them. Yeah, and that's it's out of like one hundred fifty eight games. So he's won like ninety of those games. It's crazy. Yeah, that's that's. He's used to playing indoors. He's going to be playing indoors a lot this season. 
The Falcons are still a very good team who just were unfortunate last year. There is. There's plenty of talent on that on that oh. Falcons team. Mm-hmm. It's great. The thing is, I don't know if I feel comfortable betting on the number, but it wouldn't surprise me whatsoever if they ended up winning 10 games this they year. They won seven games last year, and they sucked, and they were injury riddled. Yeah. You don't think they're going to win 10? No, no. I mean, and, it know, could definitely it, happen. It's one of those things where it's like it, it almost looks too easy. So maybe, yeah, maybe that's why. Right. Yeah, that's the other thing too. I think it's going to be a really popular yeah. bet, and if like 65 or 70 percent of the public is on Atlanta over, it's like fade that. I can see that. And Vegas always knows, man. That's yeah. changing. I thought last year yeah, they were sure. a lock. To, yeah, it was nine and a half last yeah. year. Those injuries were bad, but it's also that was also like here's the thing. It's like everyone's like. Oh, the uh, the injuries killed their defense, but we also don't even know if the defense was going to be good if everyone yeah, got. You lost like who? Deion Jones? Like you? Deion lost Jones, Keanu Neal, like our Pro Bowlers? Yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. I mean, like they got obviously like got a worse. couple of defensive guys who were like role players. You lost, you know, key players. Yeah, but do we know? Maybe they would have been the twentieth ranked defense instead of the fucking thirty second. You know, maybe what they would have won three more games. Maybe, you know, that's, you maybe, know. yeah. Uh, yeah, no. yeah, I got Atlanta I got this eight one. and a half over. Um, a lot of this this team has been talked about a lot this offseason. There are massive expectations for this team. Uh, it's a team that hasn't been very good over the past, I don't know, 20 fucking years. And they add a few good players. They have a great end of the run of last season. Cleveland Browns, nine and a half. I'm going under. Under. I like that. That's such a good public fade yeah. right oh, there. Huge. See Everybody's them, hammering that over. See Everybody. winning nine games. Yeah, I do too. Eight and eight, nine and seven. Why is it that, yes, they were seven, eight, and one last year, so they're going to win three more games. I know Baker was great. They added OBJ. They added players on defense. They even might add Gerald McCoy. But Freddie Kitchens is a first-year head coach, and I don't think Freddie Kitchens is is the Sean McVay of first-year head coaches. You know what I mean? He's not. Yeah. He's not. He's, in the looks department, at least. Well, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'd actually rather my head coach be ugly as sin. Oh, but I love Freddie Kitchens. Either way. Um, no, but just looking at the schedule now, like they play the the AFC North, their division, which isn't bad. Like the Bengals suck, but they have to play the Ravens twice. They have to play the Steelers twice. Both those teams are Ravens were a playoff team. The Steelers were just on the fringe of the playoffs. Yeah, they're they're both season. good teams. This stretch, week three, you got the Rams, then you got the Ravens, then you got at San Fran, Seattle, then you got a bye, and then you play the Patriots. Like their schedule is not easy. No. For you to say that you're going to go out there and win 10 games because you added uh, a cancer-riddled wide receiver and some some playmakers on defense, it's just I, I don't like I don't like the prospects of nine and a half and them winning 10 games after winning seven and all all this commotion going on. I see nine and seven max minimum. Mm-hmm. That's what I see. That's that's their ceiling. Nine and seven. My only my only concern there is just like I don't want to bet against Baker. That's no, it, I don't either. Guys, yeah. just psycho. Guys, just he's and literally he's been, he's, all he does is prove people. People wrong. have been does, betting against him his entire career, and that's the problem. Yeah, listen, nine okay. and seven—that's obtainable. That might get you in the playoffs. He just doesn't seem like it someone who's who, where the hype gets to him. You know, no, I like agree. he always rises. To the I definitely, I definitely agree. But I'm not in love with like Freddie. I like Freddie Kitts as a head coach kind of scares me a little bit. I don't know much about him, so maybe I'm just taking too much stock into that. No, no, I think that's a good bet. Yeah, listen, dude, it's still the Browns. You still it's, have to have that Browns. in the back of your uh, listen, head. Listen, listen. It seems like it, a bet. It's a different Browns team. It is. Oh, yes. Yeah. It's a different culture with Cleveland. But And plus, I all just, these good players, you don't know how they're going to work together yet. How are they going to mesh? We don't know. 2006, exactly. when the Eagles had the, the dream team, they went 8-8. Eight and eight. Yeah, exactly. They had everybody. They signed yeah. everybody. Every Odell player. starts chirping. You know, Baker, I need the ball. And I get, you know, there's a know. lot of heads. <laughs> remember, there's a lot of heads to feed in that Cleveland team. Yeah, this seems like a heads. bet I would make. I would have made like the over like four years ago, which is why I know it's a bad bet. Right. Like if I would have exactly. made, so, I know now when I look back, I'm like things I would have done three or four years ago when it comes to fantasy or like regular football, I know are, is stuff I shouldn't do now. It's exactly. the opposite is probably and what works that, And everybody's going to hit that fucking bet. So yeah. One other bet. Flavor. I think this is uh, also kind of similar in the sense um, I have Chicago under nine and a half wins. So I rarely feel confident. I kind of said this. I, I rarely feel confident putting money on a team to hit double digit wins if they're not one of the elite teams. Like right. if you're not New Orleans, Kansas City, or like the Patriots or Indy this year, like I don't want to get really excited about you unless I really know who you are. And I don't think we know who Chicago really is. They're a team that like, I mean, eleven wins is absolutely in their like range of outcomes, right? I, wh- were they eleven to five last year? Mm-hmm. Twelve and four. Twelve oh, and four. Wow. Okay, so yeah, it's definitely in their range of outcomes, but I don't expect uh, expect it because they leaned so heavily on that defense last year, um, and it made the re- their offense look way better than I think it was. It made Mitch Trubisky look a lot better than it was, and it's very rare that you see these teams with the elite levels of defense be able to. Re- they're not repeatable. I've seen a lot of numbers on on like Twitter and people doing they studies lost and a lot shit. Of that defense too. 
Yeah, they, I mean, first of all, they lost Vic Fangio, right? He's gone. Yeah. Uh, they lost Bryce Callahan, who was like one of the best slot receivers in the NFL, uh, slot Corners cornerbacks last year in the NFL. Adrian Amos, one of the one of the best safeties in the NFL. So they lost a lot of like pieces where people probably don't like pay attention to that shit throughout the offseason because it's not necessarily fantasy relevant. Um, but the fact of the matter is their defense will not repeat the dominance. They're going to be good, of course, but they're not going to repeat the dominance that they had last it year. It would be hard to repeat. That. Right. And and I think in the case of where like Arizona absolutely, their offense killed the defense, it was opposite where Chicago's defense absolutely spiked the production of Chicago's offense. Probably. So if their defense takes a step back, which I expect it to, I don't feel confident relying on Mitch Trubisky's arm to win you you know, 10 games. And I also think that division. I was just going to say it's is low division. key, it's uh, low key, very good. So Green Bay completely revamped their defense. They're going to be good this year. They're going to be very good. Uh, they had a lot of injuries last year, so that offense is going to be you know normal Aaron Rodgers led offense. Uh, and I think a lot of the same could be said with Detroit. They brought a lot of good pieces in free agency wise on their defense, and their offense will be sneaky good again as long as they get their players back to full health. Minnesota is intriguing. Um, their their team is they have a lot a range of outcomes that's very wide. Right. I actually think Minnesota can be very good. I think Minnesota can be I very good, too. I think they could be the NFC champion. Really? I'm not saying they're going to get there, but I'm saying they could be that good. Kirk Cousins, I don't love him, but he's a good quarterback. He, he is. is. Yeah. There's someone I, I wouldn't, I like her. Good. wouldn't surprise me if they went 11-5, but it also wouldn't surprise me if they ended up going 6-10 eight, eight, and and or 7-9. Yeah. and nine. yeah. yeah. Um, so I just think overall every team in that division is going to be tough. Yeah. And it's easy to write off Detroit, but I think Detroit's a better team than most people realize. So I just I don't like the fact that Chicago was so elite on the defensive side of the ball that I don't think it's repeatable this year. And no. I don't want to bet on them winning 10 games. I, I, look at the Jaguars a few years ago. Exactly. It's a yeah, perfect example. They the AFC Championship. They had a great defense. And people are like, they're the amazing, year, but I drafted was their so defense bad. in the ninth round, I thought it was going to be the best defense ever. They yeah. were awful. They you probably dropped them real early. Um, it's very, very rare. You see I those. see. I, I'm with you. I would. I don't like betting teams to win double digit games either. Um, but I, I'm kind of suspect on that. I think Chicago actually comes in this season with a little chip on their shoulder after um, Cody Parkey <laughs> really fucked them over. I think that <laughs> another year in a, in Nagy's system with Trubisky can only help. The defense is definitely not going to be as good as it was. Um, I, I wouldn't bet. I wouldn't bet that total. I, w- I, w- I would stay away from that. But I could definitely see the reasoning why you're going under nine, nine and a half. I could see nine and seven easily for that team. Tough division. Yeah. Defenses, yeah. Like I, I think. The, I think they'll probably go nine and seven. Yeah. But I'm, I don't feel confident you in know, them getting to that ten and six mark. Right. Um. So that's that's the last one for me. Any of you guys have other uh, over unders? Oh, I got one more. I could do real quick. Do it, baby. Hey, do so, it real quick. All we got real is quick. Time. Ready? Real quick. All we got is time, money, and bitches the and drugs. Denver Broncos. Oh, good. I'm glad you're going here. Over six and a half wins. Easiest no bet you will ever make in your entire life. Listen, in 2017. Wait, wait, wait. Is this coming from a homer or you're you're taking yourself out of your body? You're I'm not taking myself out of, this is just me looking at football. Okay. You're so, a football guy, so I'll take your word. 2017, five wins with a shit team. 2018 last year, six wins with a shit team, right? Shit coaching staff. We won't say shit team. We'll say shit coaching staff. Six wins in 2018. The line is six and a half. Are they one game better? I think with Vic Fangio, yes. With Joe Flacco, Vic Fangio is a very, very good yes. proven head coach. Just real quick, just real quick, Vic Fangio as a defensive head, not as a, a defensive, head coach. as a defensive, defensive coordinator. coordinator. This is a joke. Uh, the '96, uh, the '96 the Panthers. I wasn't reading the tone. 90, 1996 Panthers as the d- defensive coordinator had a very stout defense and advanced to the NFC Championship game. Why did you get so like the ninety six? That was twenty three years ago, <laughs> dude. That's how old Fangio is. So we're gonna fast forward a little bit to two thousand six with the Ravens, where in four seasons the Ravens team had three seasons ranked in the top three defenses in the league, and Fangio had an abundance of defensive talent to work with, kind of like he has now in Denver with Von Miller. He got Bryce Callahan. Okay, here's the thing: I don't think anyone's worried about Denver's defense. No, right? Not yeah. at all. Tell me their offense is gonna be good, and tell They're, me why. Well. Joe Flacco is definitely an upgrade over Case Keenum. I don't is care he, anyone is he is. Yes, hundred percent. Joe Flacco. He got benched for a guy who can't throw the ball. Okay, first of all, and they were in the middle of the did, playoff. Joe benched. Flacco makes that team two wins better. You think? Yes. Come oh. on. Oh yeah. So here, here. Let's just go. Let's just go look. From two thousand eight to two thousand seventeen, Joe Flacco had one season with the Ravens under seven wins. And that was in two thousand fifteen when he tore his ACL in Week Eleven. Now, granted, they were three and seven at the time, so they probably weren't gonna. You know, he wasn't going to keep that over seven wins record going streak. But listen, Joe Flacco has had a very successful career, whether you want to admit it or not, or you like him. He hasn't, but he's not very good. I think that the Broncos, listen, we were in a Super Bowl in 2015, three years ago. A lot of that roster is still there. And then the rest has been replaced with young talent. And not to mention Mike Munchak, the best offensive line coach in the game, is now our offensive line coach. And 
His I'm offensive sure, line. I'm pretty sure like the Cowboys offensive line coach moved over to Cincinnati last year, and that was like everyone is yelling at me in my comments about how the Bengals fucking O line was going to be the the goat. Sorry. Dude. Well, what's okay. his name? Uh, had a good season. It says Denver is close, moving closer to a new deal with Chris Harris. Yeah, well, the what they're trying to do with Chris Harris is they're well, trying get to another winner. give him more money this year and then extend yeah. like next year. So that way it's not like signing him for another All two, right. three years. All right. But yeah, listen, Broncos over six and a half. It's a new team now, guys. You're, you you lied to us when you said you, this is not coming from a homer because that was a comp- the, the biggest homer. <laughs> this is not coming from a homer. Let's look back to 1996. <laughs> 1996. <laughs> I was just telling you about Fangio. Listen, he's great with his great history. I am actually going to be a homer myself real quick, and I will do it quick. Giants over five and a half wins. No. They had they had five last year. How what? Why is their team so much worse? Are they are they one win better? I think they're like four wins better. They're gonna make the playoffs. <laughs> but yes, they're one win better. You give me shit for what I say. You, you're saying this is garbage. <laughs> they open up with the Cowboys, Bills, Buccaneers, Redskins. Cool. They're so gonna go own Cowboys, five. Cowboys, Bills, Buccaneers, Redskins. And then they play. And then they're gonna be playing the Cardinals, the Lions, the Jets, the Dolphins. The Redskins again. I haven't heard of one win yet on that schedule. <laughs> well, that's because I haven't said the Patriots yet. <laughs> the Goat Slayer going in in Foxborough and slaying the Goat again. No, the but goat seriously. Slayers. But seriously, it's year two of Sharmer's system. They got rid of OBJ, cancer. Barely was on the field, right? Collins. Oh, oh, Landon Collins. He's gone. They got the same player in Jabril Peppers. The same player, if not better. Olivier Vernon, what had he done? They haven't lost it. They upgraded the offensive line. I don't see. They were just 5-11 and 11 with Odell Beckham, and he missed five games. What You're telling me right now they're so much worse than 5-11 and 11 again? They're not going to be 6-10? and 10? I, I'm not crazy. I know I'm not. <laughs> I'm not crazy. I know I'm not. Are you asking? Are you like asking us to confirm that? Because I won't confirm that. Well, I was kind of asking, but I was also telling myself. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say you're trying to convince us or yourself. Yeah. Or like, you, did you want me to be like, yeah, no, you're not crazy. No, bro. dude, like I will ten bet games you, for the Giants. I will bet ten, you, ten wins. I will we've bet ar- you. We've already made these bets yeah, like thousand times. Even, you haven't even ran your fucking mile yet. I will bet you. It's ten nice miles. Out. Get your ass out there. Ten, uh, we'll ten do, miles. <laughs> we'll do it next week. Ten miles. Giants win six I more. Can't games. even run ten miles. Your ass can't run ten miles. Yeah. Dude, my knee hurts so bad. You ever been at the beach and like people are slowly walking into the ocean because it's like cold and like you're that one asshole who just sprints by them and jumps like right into the wave? In. Yeah, yeah that was me yesterday. But like when I went to do the the jump, you ever hyperextended your knee? I hyperextended my elbow, so I know what you're talking about. So really? Similar. Yeah. Oh, fuck that. I did it to my Gross. knee when I went for the fucking jump over the mm-hmm. wave, and it just buckled, and mm-hmm. I went fucking face first, and my knee hurts a lot mm-hmm. today, man. Yeah, you just gotta ice it. You'll be all right. Nothing yeah? to do for a little icer. Yeah. Little we'll, ice it. Little codeine. Yeah. A little scissor. Yeah, a little Robitussin. That'll, that'll get it. A couple of comments. Couple comments we'll yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's talk about some YouTube. I got, a, I got a barbecue to go to. Let's, let's go. go. Let's, let's get through these comments. First one. Finally, an FTP that Snacks doesn't have unplugged headphones in his ears. Do you hear them? Yeah. Loud and clear. You guys, th- you, you, they think it's not unplugged, but they're Bluetooth. Yeah. Yeah. I've been trying to tell them. Yeah, You're also so listening to Mother Nature. They're original to the ground. Bluetooth. Well, see, that was those were my old headphones. I put them into the I plugged them into the ground so I could hear the devil's those fucking. Those are the new AirPods. Yes. AirPods three. AirPods Snacks point oh. Yes. Love that. All right. My, my creation. Would you trade Antonio Brown for Baker Mayfield? I have Deshaun Watson. Also tough choice. Salute Alexander. Thank you for the question, but we're gonna need a little bit more uh, super yeah, flex. So the way I was gonna answer this was if it's super flex. Yeah, I make that trade. If it's not, you have Deshaun. You don't need Baker. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I would do the same thing. Uh, we need guys. If you're gonna ask like specific player or trade questions or whatever, sit starts. So we always need the scoring type as well as like the yes, league setting because these yeah. are gonna vary so wildly from like, PPR standards. Alexander, standard, Alexander, six point passing Alexander hit the comments this one, and we will get to it next week. Yeah, uh, I'll bet my right testicle that Damian Williams is gonna be useless next year. <laughs> Casey is going to use a second, third round pick on an RB in a very strong 2020 RB draft. And that guy will steal Williams' job, lock it in. Oh, you mean next year, like in 2020, Yeah, actually. I just put that one in there because of the uh, the bet for the right testicle. I remember you bet a testicle. Uh, uh, why would you the, bring that up? In the history, in the, in the recent past. Nah. I'm pretty sure I bet a testicle that uh, Christian McCaffrey would go over 600 total yards yeah, in scrimmage last year. Good bet. Yeah, it's good. I get to keep both my nuts. <laughs> yeah, I, I bet both my balls Giants would win more than one game. All right. All right. More than one game. <laughs> I would still take the under. <laughs> um, I would love to go on 16. An hour and a half is a bit much, guys. Love your show. I didn't read any of these comments before you put these in here. Uh, love your show, but more videos with less time in them. It's so much easier to be able to watch. Listen, guys, we, f- we just well, we just riff off we, each other. Yeah, we just ran real late that last one. So Last like, time, last episode was an hour and a half, but normally we literally try to shoot for like 45, 50 that's, minutes. That's on each episode. But sometimes we just get into so, shit. Sometimes yeah. we just put too much shit on the show sheet and we just ramble on. So I, I feel like today was a good, valuable yeah, episode. Today, so we're we going to, yeah. 
Yeah. And we're only at... We're going to try to keep everything under an hour. We're going to shoot for that 50-minute mark. We're at 54 but, minutes right now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so, so. And we'll be done in two. So yeah, so, uh, yeah. so end of story, you fuck you. Uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I love you. Does, does poker count as a sport? Yes. If so, rounders has to be up there. Hold on. Real, real quick to preface this. He's uh, saying this because last week's Herd of Goats, which is our Mount Rushmore, we did sports movies. And, you know, we take the 101, 102, 103. We all four picks in this draft for our favorite sports movies of all time. Rounders was not selected. Had I thought of Rounders and had I uh, had the argument in my head and provided it was a sports movie, it probably would have been my first round pick because that is one of my top five but movies here's the deal. of all time. It's not a sport. Poker's not a sport. You Poker's say. not a sport. It is? I love poker. It's a sport. Okay, but What does ESPN not. stand for? Entertainment. I'm actually asking because I forgot. Sports News No. No. Entertainment. Sports programming. Something. Sports programming network. Is the World know. Series of Poker on yes. ESPN. Yeah, but so is fucking esports, and that's not a sport either. You know, it's literally like called esports. Yeah, it's a, it's a video game, though. It's not a sport. A sport is something with human activity involving physical movement. That's not. It's, and skill and exertion. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa Poker is a lot of skill. Poker is skill. Poker's more video skill games than is luck. skill. Because they're idiots. Move on. Um, I want to know what you guys think. Yeah, so rounders definitely should have been there. Would have been the yeah, first pickup off the waiver thing. wire. Hundred uh, percent. You sh- you guys should do your most likely player comp for yourselves, and then out yourselves through a player comp combine. <laughs> Animal can be all style. Oh, you put this in because you got the fucking Mike all style. This is snacks 100%. can be Matt Jones Matt and Jones, Nick terrible. can be Drew Weatherford. All right. Well, first of all. I don't even know who Drew Weatherford is. I thought it was Steve, Steve Weatherford. Weatherford. I thought it was Steve Weatherford's punter, and I was like, I don't like that, but he's no. still a fucking beast. He's Jack, bro. He's jacked he, he, to he, shit, he's but a that's clown. not a good comp for he's me, I don't think. No, you don't I'm want kind him. of a clown, too. Why the fuck am I Matt Jones? Is Matt Jones the running back from, If anybody, I'm from a keen to leave. All I do is talk shit. Is he? The, yeah. <laughs> is, he, is Matt Jones the, the running yeah, back that came out of Florida? Went Always hurts. Always hurts. For like two weeks, everyone loved him. That's a really random fucking group of comps. And Drew Weatherford, apparently, if this is like a guy, he's a quarterback. He's a real guy. He was a... Quarterback at Florida State University from 2004 to 2008. Okay. So if he was not, if that's I, not a I typo, like the idea. I like. The, dude, I, li- I think we should do an episode where we do a combine this off season, and yeah, we've I talked about this before. It's a great idea. We tried. We were going to do it at I the. N- get outside. We were going to do it for the NFL draft, but we basically just got too drunk the whole weekend, so we didn't do anything that was like physically active. Big shocker. But <laughs> but we will BSO big shockers only. We will do something active like that this off season, so you could see just how much more athletic I am than these two fucking chumps. I do want to know what your reasoning behind his. Comp to Matt Jones and mine no to Drew sense. Weatherford. It makes is. no sense. I understand Matt, the Mike Allstop for you. Don't need to elaborate on the Mike Allstop. Like, I know. I understand because you guys I know are both, I'm short and skinny, but I'm not Matt fucking Jones. You guys I'm both never have, injured. I'm here every week. You guys <laughs> both have big man problems, so I get the comp there. Well, I, I actually think Ben Hartley is animals like one of 25 burner accounts, and he just wrote that in there. So no, Ben's a good very dude. True. Ben's a good. I dude. know Ben is. Drew Weatherford. Good. Drew Weatherford looks like fucking Chris Hansen or Scott Hansen. What's the NFL Scott, guy? Scott Hansen. He looks like Scott Hansen, 6'3". Good looking dude. Yeah, it's not bad. Uh, it looks we, like a creepy finance guy. We got guy, one but like, more. What, what do we got? Two yeah, I think, I think we got another comment. There's one more. Yeah, this one. Should be I enlarged just, dogs got to eat. And I ask why. And you said because it spells out to edge. I like it. Uh, oh, that's actually really cool. I like it's it. But late. like, I don't want to say like, welcome back to enlarged dogs got to eat. Yeah, it yeah. sounds awful. And if we took our pants down, we couldn't really use that title. So yeah, I thought he was honestly just making fun of me. So me too. Like I, that's not what I thought, but I wasn't fat. sure. I was I wasn't sure what exactly like it was getting at. So I had to ask. And uh, in large, I, I, I guess it, I guess it makes sense. Oh. All right, yeah. It's but Edge, Edge was a great WWE. Oh, holy shit, it's a lot for the abbreviation. Yeah. Can you hear us still? No. <laughs> um, I hear myself talking a lot louder. <laughs> Fucking terrible, Edge is, right? Uh, Edge is a great WWE wrestler. You don't want to disrespect it. And Big Dog's got to eat. It has the name stay. It's already there. Oh, oh. Yeah, uh, happy Memorial Day, guys. Salute to our service, <laughs> men and women. Thank you for all you do. Yeah, yeah happy Memorial Day, everybody. You. It's not just about us going to get drunk and eating hot dogs and hamburgers. That's about, only 98% but, of it. Right. However, we have to stop and think about the men and women who serve our country and keep us free and do all that. So all you listeners who are service men and women, we thank you very much. Yeah, Appreciate so, it. Yes. I hope you enjoy your That'll holiday. wrap up this week. Make sure you hit that thumbs up button down below. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. We're covering everything 2019 fantasy football throughout the summer. Drop some comments if you have any questions. Uh, fucking whatever you want to do. Talk shit. Do some more player comps. I'd actually like to hear some more player comps from other people. Uh, but that's it for today. We'll see you all next Thursday.